second half of the presentation. We want to take a video screenshot of all of you. So we will, I, when I when I ask, when I request for it, you can please open your video. But for now, you can keep your video off. This entire session is recorded and the recording of this program is available in our public YouTube channel called CEG Connect. Uh, the CEG Connect YouTube channel is free to join and it's open for all CEGNs and all the previous 25 programs, I think all 24 programs in the past, we have the recording available for you to view and all our speakers have been CEG alumni from uh, from our college and, and all of them have been in very senior positions in very many companies all over the world. Uh, so the recording will be available. If you have any questions, um, we can use the Slido program. I will introduce Slido in the next slide, uh, how to use the program. And then there will be periodic live poll in Slido. I'll be pushing some poll questions in Slido for you guys to respond. Uh, please do participate in the poll. It's very, very easy to participate. Slido can also be used to ask questions. You can ask questions while the program is going on. The host, as well as the guest speaker, will be able to see your, pro your questions as they come up. So please do enter your questions as you go along with the program. And during the Q&A, if your name is called, are you able to see who's asking the question? If your name is called, please unmute and open your video to ask the question. Okay. So today's session's guest speaker is Mr. Shankar Ram, 1975 CEJ Mac. He is the chairman, board of trustees of Thai Global and the chairman of Food Finders. Thai Global, for those of you who are wondering, Thai is, stands for the Indus Entrepreneurs. It's a, one of the largest non-profit global organization. Uh, we have chapters in about 60 countries, 60, uh, 60 different uh, uh, cities in 23 countries. And Shankar is the chairman of the Thai Global, which is basically managing all the Thai chapters worldwide. He's also a serial angel investor, serial entrepreneur, he's a venture capitalist, there are lots of things I can talk about him. So we we'll let him tell what he's doing when we give it back to him. Uh, I'll be the host. I'm from 1985 Mechanical Engineering. And Jaitesh Kalpakam is my co-host. He hasn't joined yet. He'll be joining shortly. And Saradi, Partha Saradi is our uh, technical support. He is a 2021 uh, CEG IT graduate. So to join Slido, all you have to do is you can go to any, any browser. Either it's a laptop, desktop, mobile phone, or a tablet you can go to any browser and just type slido.com when you type slido.com uh, you will see a screen on the screen you can type this code for today 2692213 there will be a place in the screen to type your command uh, type your code just type 2692213 periodically we'll be putting this code in the google chat box for people who join late but you can just go to slido.com and any browser and put in 2692213 when you go to Slido, it will look like this. And you will see there are two tabs there, a Q&A tab and a polls tab. The Q&A tab is where you can ask your questions, what you want to ask anytime during the program. And the polls tab is where you can go and answer poll questions. Okay, so that's what I would like to do with this program. So uh, go for the questions and ask the question when you want to ask the question. And, and we'll continue on with the program. And the question and answer session comes, we will go through all the questions and you will have the guest speaker answer all the questions as much as possible. Okay. So with that, I'm going to uh, turn it over to Shirish. Shirish is our student speaker today. Shirish wants to make a short presentation, Shankar. And for all the alumni who are in the call today, he'll talk about uh, what uh, is going on in the college and what they're doing with their with their particular group. And five minutes of the presentation from Shirish. And after that, we'll go on to, to Shankar's introduction. Okay. Shirish, uh, over to you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, am I audible? Yes, you are. Yes. Okay. Yes. If so I'm to, if aware of the present, fact that... If you want to present, you can present your screen, Shirish. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm aware of the fact that it is not evening for most of you here, but still good evening. Uh, my name is Shirish, second year mechanical student from CEG. Uh, oh, everyone would have seen Jawan film. Uh, I know CEG Connect has nothing to do with Jawan, but still there is this nice little quote from Shah Rukh Khan, which goes on like, success is being at the right time, at the right place, with the right person. I repeat, success is to be at the right place, at the right time, with the right person. So when you're a student trying to start a startup or set up a business firm, who better than an alumnus who had done that already can be a right person for you. 
So we, a group of 11 students, have started a student community named Catalyse. C-A-T-A-L-Y-S-E-E-D, Catalyse. So how do we function is that we try to form a student forum by and picking the students who are interested in entrepreneurship. And since we are based on CED, we have connect to our alumni network, which is spread all across the globe. And the community does the bridging process. Uh, let's say there is this guy A who has some startup idea. He either comes to us or we will spot him out through any one of our events, workshops, uh, events, something like that, contests, and we'll spot him out. And if his idea is doable or practically viable, we'll connect him with an alumni who is into that particular domain so that it this idea can emerge into a startup or in the least case scenario, it can give him a placement or an inter inter interning opportunity. And my motto behind talking about my community here is we are working to spread the community all over the state of Tamil Nadu. As you all know, the wider the network is, the more successful it can be. So for my community to get some vis visibility amongst the global alumni, I requested Mr. Uh, Vishwanathan sir for an opportunity to present my vision here in CEG Connect, who very kindly said yes. So I'm very much touched by your gesture, sir. And I, it really is amusing to see a person of your caliber to be putting this much efforts to give it back to the place you graduated from. Thank you the, for that, sir. Uh, I hope my uh, the functioning of my community is clear for each and every one year. Uh, I'll, I'll present it now. I'll present my number. Uh, you can contact me if you want to help us uh, grow further. One second, let me present. So. so this is my contact number. Uh, if you're actually interested in this community's idea, you can actually contact me directly. This is my number right over here. You can contact me, you can message me, you can email me so that we'll take all your all of your inputs and we'll try to make it a bigger community as a whole. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Excellent. Thank you so much, Shirish, uh, for your time so much, and the presentation. Uh, we'll now start with the Shankar. Shankar, what we're going to do now in the format is uh, I'm going to hand it over to you for the next 15 minutes. What I would like you to do is to basically talk about your journey from the time you left CEG to where you are right now, focusing more on the learnings and significant, uh, significant experience you had, which you believe could be useful to the students and alumni. So give about 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, you can do it in any order you want. Uh, you can do it as a story or you can tell it as some sequence of events, however it's convenient to you. But what we want to hear from you is your story from the time you left CEG to where you are now. And after about 20 minutes, I will uh, remind you and then we will go on to a set of questions that I will be asking you in a fireside chat format. And then the second half of the program, we'll have the audience ask questions. So for audience, while Shankar is talking, please, if you have any questions you want to ask, please put the questions in the Slido program or in the Google Meet chat box, either one of them. And we will be able to take the questions with the guest speaker the second half of the program. So with that, Shankar, I'll turn it over to you for your story, please. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, good evening to all of you. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Um, again, as we said, it, uh, I always like to tell stories, and it's my story, and it's my journey. And it's been a fantastic, great journey, no regrets. I enjoy every minute of the journey, and I'm still going on the journey. So. Before I begin my journey post Gindi, I'd like to say a little bit background about myself. Okay, um, you, know, you all know that I'm a 1975 grad, but I'll tell you how I became a mechanical graduate, mechanical. So I joined engineering in uh, 1970, and those days it was a five-year engineering program, semester. We were the first semester program, five-year program. And uh, I was a top student. I come from a large family. I had uh, four elder sisters, one younger sister, one younger brother. I was the fifth or the first son in the family. Uh, I wanted to be an engineer. My father wanted me to be an engineer. My uncle was an engineer from Gindi. So I said, hey, I want to go to Gindi. And that was my dream when I was in high school. I used to come across the river and come to Gindi. My uncle used to stay in a hostel. I said, I'll always want to go to this college. I loved the tile roof. 
the and I fell in love with the campus and I wanted to be there. So that's the beginning of my Gindi experience. And uh, we are from a reasonably wealthy family. My father was a business real estate developer and uh, we were doing well. But things took a turn. And uh, by 1969, 70, when I got in, his business was going down. I didn't know about it. I was hardly 16, 17. And then he fell ill. So in the second year, in 1971, he passed away. All of a sudden, we realized the business was in complete shambles. We had nothing. All our homes were mortgaged, uh, loans. We had nothing, theoretically nothing. And uh, they asked me to drop out of school, a college, I mean, engineering college. I said, no, I want to continue this. And I pursued my engineering from 71 to 75, taking loans, national loan scholarships, grants from institutions. I went door to door asking for money. I survived and I struggled to do this. But luckily, I was a great student. I was a second ranker in, um, in, in uh, my second year. So because of that, they gave me electronics and communication. Those days, there's only four majors, electronics, communication, electrical, mechanical, and civil. And I was given, because the second ranker, I was given electronic communication. I went there for a week. I didn't like it. I walked out, went to the principal's office, said, I don't like this branch. He says, there's nothing else. This is the best. I said, I don't like it. I want to go to civil, like my father. He said, no, you're not going to civil. That's the lowest rank those days. And he was a civil professor with WP Vijay Raghavan. He said, no, that's the lowest. I'm not putting you in civil. Then I said, I don't like electrical, so I'll take mechanical. So I took mechanical by, not by choice, I was forced into it. There's nothing else I had. Because I went back and said, oh, mechanical has some production management, some courses, computer courses I can take. And so I chose mechanical. I'm not cut out to be a mechanical engineer. I was more interested in business management, even those days, because I've seen my father doing business. So I took mechanical by default. There's nothing else for me. Uh, luckily, as I said, again, I was a good student. So I was an honor student. And I took computer courses, numerical methods, operation research. So I liked it. And then I had admissions from 35 colleges in the US, but I could not go because I didn't have money. So I worked in India for four years uh, in defense labs, a uh, couple of other big companies in different cities in Hyderabad, Pune, Bangalore. And then 79, I decided finally, because my GRD source, so I finally, one of a small university in US gave me a scholarship and said, hey, you can come. So I theoretically borrowed money for my airline ticket. And with $400 in the pocket, I landed in this country, US, uh, late 1979-80. I came to this country. Uh, went to Louisiana State University because that's the only university that gave me full scholarship. Took my five-year GRE score because the fourth year, the GRE scores, uh, Berkeley wanted me to rewrite GRE, which I was not no mood to write it. And finally, I came here and did my master's in system science those days, very few departments, schools had computer science. So I called system science masters. And I found out that I was very fascinated by graphics databases. So I made that my specialty, database and graphics. And uh, before graduating, actually, I was a very uh, go-getter guy. So before I even finished my master's, I took up a job in computer mapping company and did some clipping algorithms and databases and then went on to a big company called Slumberjay within a year, where I was handling huge amounts of data. What we call big data, AI, we're all there those days. We didn't call it that. I handled millions of data points and analyzed it and gave it to the companies in the trucks so that they know where the oil is. So I realized that in these big companies, there's so much politics that I was not cut out for that. I had so many ideas I couldn't implement because I had to follow a structure. So I left and started my first company in 1983. So I'm a long-term entrepreneur. Before you guys were born, I started my first company, 1983. And that was a computer mapping company. Very few of you know, probably, you heard of a company called ESRI in India. That's the largest mapping company in India. I brought them to India. I know the president, I know him very well. I brought ESRI to India in 1983, 84, uh, in, to Pune for IDM to do mapping, digitizing in India. And then later on, IDM was bought over by HCL, now HCL, now ESR is one of the largest companies, private companies, even today. I still know the president and his wife, and they are the largest mapping company in the world. I brought them to India in 1984, uh, and India is using that a lot now. So I went on to start a mapping company. Then again, I started doing, uh, I got fascinated by 
reducing paperwork, how do you do electronic everything, reducing paperwork in that. And I thought US is advanced, but US is so far behind. Everything, even today, we are not that advanced. India is much more advanced than US on a lot of transactions. So I found out that the import-export documentation was so paper-oriented. And I said, why do we need all this? Can we eliminate the paper? So I started coming up with solutions. And I worked with DHL Airways and Mattel Toys to come up with solutions to reduce paperwork. So again, 1997, that is late, late down there, uh, I did the first electronic import completely paperless from all over the world into the US. And I got an award from US Customs to do the innovative work where there's no paper in any transaction, Mattel Toys. And I went and automated the import export transactions for multinational companies like Target, DHL, Starbucks, Mattel, you name it, Epson, Toshiba. I've done so many of those companies automation. And surprisingly, or DHL, Mattel, they're still using my software even today. So from 1989, I started that, and they're still using my software for every transaction that goes around the world. So then I get to move on. As I sold my, I then, uh, interestingly, I had a lot of Oracle programmers at that time. Microsoft had come with a SQL Server. I wanted to go to Microsoft. So then I switched to Microsoft. I had 25 Oracle programmers and database guys. What do I do? I start another company to place those Oracle programmers at other places. So Y2K came in, so I had another company that was doing placement. I had a company that was developing software. So I had multiple companies I was running at the same time. A true entrepreneur is always coming with ideas starting companies. So 2001, I had my first exit and started my first investment also. Then on and off 2004, I sold one of my companies to UK Supply Chain Solutions who wanted uh, this automation process. And then after three, four years, I started one more company, sold it to Ernst & Young. So my journey has been interesting. I have started companies. I have uh, sold them, exited most of them. One of the companies, I took it from half a million dollars to $30 million and sold it to Hitachi. So I have done multiple companies. I'm an entrepreneur uh, in my spirit. And that's all I think, live, breathe entrepreneurship. And it's been a fantastic journey. And I've been investing for quite some time. So I became an angel investor. And I invested in multiple companies throughout the world, and mostly in the US, a mentor. And at the same time, I was also involved in giving back. Thai was an organization started in LA in 97. I got involved. From 2008, I developed Thai Southern California into a bigger chapter, got visibility, went into Thai Global, which is uh, today 57 chapters throughout the world in multiple countries. There's a board of trustees, 11 of them. I'm the chairman of the board. I run the whole Thai global network with the help. The chapters run themselves. We just give them guidelines and help them what it is. And I also go back to society. In India, I started the Gindi 1975 Trust. We give full tuition fees. Started for engineers. Now we do all undergraduate course, eligible families. Because remember, I went through the situation. I went through where I did not have money. I had to drop out of school. So I wanted students to have the option. So I created the Gindi 1975 Trust with a few of my friends. We have a trust that supports four-year education program, engineering and non-engineering. We also have a food rescue program in the US, which I'm the chair, I run it. So the past 20 years or 22 years, I decided I'm gonna give back to the community in all forms, both my home country where I was born and my country, the country that has accepted me and where I live, both the countries I give back. So in these experiences, you can see, you know, uh, there are a lot of problems that we'll face, a lot of things we come across, but persistence is very important. And you have to know what you want. Sometimes you don't know what you want, but you have to be sincere, passionate about what you do, whatever it is, whether you work for somebody, you have a company, or you do charity, your passion, you do it, you work, you go back. And any problem that you come across, any problem in life, in business, it is, it, is, it is a big problem. It could be a big problem. But if you think it's a problem, it's a problem. But if you think there is a solution, there is a solution. Because if I turn back and look at it, those problems are all behind me. So I always say it to a lot of people, if you have a problem, if you have something that happens, think through. You have overcome so many problems in the past, so this is nothing you can go forward. Uh, my favorite line is, this too shall pass. We are going forward. So this too shall pass. So always think now that 
any problem, you can resolve any problem because we have the ability to solve the problem with by ourselves or with our friends. So passion, persistence is very important. You had to, yes, you have to work at it. Nothing happens just like that. You have to work at it, whether you're an employee, student, or an entrepreneur, investor, whatever form of life, or the father, or a wife, a mother, whatever it is, it is there's always problems in life. Face it, and that too shall pass. Okay, so I think that gives a big picture. I started from my life. I, I, I've been very lucky enough to have a great journey, and I enjoy and no regrets in whatever it is. I lost a lot of money. I lost things. I lost my parents, but doesn't matter. Everything there's another gain when you lose something. Life goes on. So I think that gives a summary of what where I come from. What the whole picture? I'm an uh, I'm an entrepreneur, investor, uh, and a mentor, and I support and give charity. But Gindi is something that we're very very I'm very close to Gindi, and I come every year to the uh, Chennai. We have very strong uh, Gindi 75 batch. We are 120 students. We are still very, very close. We talk every day, and we are going to celebrate our 50th in the, probably in two years. We already started planning for it. So we are very attached to Gindi, and I go to the alumni club at least two two times a year. I am always there. When I'm in India, I'm in the alumni club. Thank you. Wow. Amazing. Thanks, Shankar. That's an interesting story, I had to say. Uh, a lot of us can relate to some of some parts of your story, maybe not quite that extent, but a lot of us can relate to that. I think uh, majority of our uh, listeners today are uh, students, so for them, maybe this is a little different. The world in the 70s and 80s is a different world compared to what it is now. But nevertheless, the learnings are very, uh, very, very relevant and very appropriate for them. Mm -hmm. Also, guys, I wanted to tell you that Shankar also belongs to a group called the Gindi Alumni Angels. The Gindi Alumni Angels is an angel investment network of CEG, students, CEG alumni who live in the U.S. Uh, there are about 50 of us who started this alumni network in the U.S. in 2019. And we have invested in more than 20 plus companies, both in the U.S. as well as the rest of the world. We have also investments in India as well. So those of you who are going to do your startup or looking for funding at some point, there is your own alma mater developed startup called Gindia uh, Investing Club called Gindi Alumni Angels. So please remember that. We also have a Gindi Alumni Angels India chapter for those who are uh, investors who want to invest in Indian rupees. We also have a Gindi Alumni Angels India. Gindi Alumni Angels US is predominantly investments in US dollars. So Shankar is one of the first few members of the Gindi Alumni Angels Club. Uh, he's also a uh, as he said, Chairman of Thai Global. Thai is a world organization. Thai chapter in Chennai is one of the most uh, uh, one of the most vibrant and active chapters. We have more than 1,000 associate members and 200 charter members in Thai Chennai. For those of you who are looking at entrepreneurship and startup as an option, you should definitely think about joining the Thai as a student, uh, student member or associate member. It's definitely worth the money you spend there. And if you guys have any questions about that, you can reach out to me or to Shankar, and we can help you get you into the Thai network. Uh, the last thing I want to say is that Shankar has been doing a lot of philanthropic and very charitable charity activities. Uh, as he said, the trust that they developed for 75 batches is doing a lot of great service in India as well. So all in all, as you can see, uh, a very successful entrepreneur, a very uh, a big philanthropist, uh, charity uh, person who runs charities, person who is a big leader, known all over the world still remember CEG and still very close to CEG. So that's one thing I can leave you all with that is that you can take a person out of CEG, but you can't take CEG out of a person. So all of us will forever remember CEG and always cherish it. Shirish, you mentioned why I do this program, partly because I love my college I came from and a lot of what I have today in life, much like what Shankar said, started when I was in college in CEG. So we want to give back to our alma mater, which gave us things in life. And that is why we are very committed and very passionate about doing things with our college. So with that, thanks, Shankar, for the uh, for the story. Uh, I want to ask you a few questions to kickstart, and sure. then we will ask audience to ask the question. So audience, uh, guys, if you want to post any question for Mr. Shankar, please post the questions in Slido. As I told you, Slido, you can open up, and there is a polls tab and, uh, and a question and answer tab. You can start posting your questions in the Q&A tab. We'll ask the questions after I finish my round of questions. So Shankar, the first question I had for you is that, uh, a lot of people are interested in entrepreneurship in India nowadays compared to what it was before. But people also have a lot of questions about how viable and how successful startups are in India, particularly in the last couple of years with all the uh, 
downturn happening in the us etc all that funding has become difficult so all the great enthusiasm that people students and young alumni had over the last 5 years people are a little bit doubtful now will this continue as a investor as well as as a thai person what would be your take on how the entrepreneurship ecosystem is evolving in india and what kind of things can happen in the immediate future yeah uh, no that, that's a good question on a high level i see a lot of opportunities and uh, i've gone all over uh, india multiple as a global chair i have to visit uh, chapters i i've been to what 15 chapters in india and i've given speeches all over and uh, one of the first things you know i noticed in odisha rajasthan or wherever it is i see all the young students like you know you're there uh, in the audience today younger people i look at it and uh, one thing i tell them is you know i wish i were younger i wish i'm in india now because the opportunities are unbelievable india is probably the largest entrepreneurial ecosystem today in the world us has got a lot of money but i see the energy that's coming out of india the companies and the ideas it's fantastic it's unbelievable but having said that uh, i want people to know entrepreneurship is not like oh i want to start a business it's a lifestyle uh, it is not something i want to start because he started it so you have to really think back and say why do you want to be an entrepreneur why do you want to start a company what is your passion what is it you want to do you don't start a company because uh, your neighbor started it your parents to fold you to start it's not like my father wanted me to be an engineer i became an engineer those days we didn't have much of a choice uh, you're an engineer or a doctor if you're from a decent family that's all we they used to be there you're a brahmin you go become an engineer or a doctor that's it so it's not no other choice we had uh, but given the choice there are a lot of people in the us we can do any other thing we want to do not just engineering similarly here entrepreneurship people think oh he is making a lot of money he started a company you should start one you don't start companies under pressure and because you want to impress people because you want to make money because thing i don't believe in it i'm an old fashioned guy but entrepreneurship is a lifestyle you start a business or you want to solve a problem you think there is an opportunity to solve a problem and you solve the problem it's a customer problem customer is all a pain you resolve a pain or you either you solve the problem or you got come up with something innovative something that's going to you know change the world a way like uber came and changed the way you think things a disruptor if you that do that yes you will be successful whatever you do success means you no know, you're solving the problem you're generating income you're surviving not because you raised so much money or you went public or you made money money is not success how i i feel successful when i say you are you solve the problem and you're an entrepreneur okay so having said that entrepreneurship is still thriving in india it is there but you don't start a company just because you want to start a company as i said one before you start a company think through what is the problem you're solving what is it you want to do if you're going to have co-founders find people who are who are thinking like you it could be a social it could be like i want to save earth i want to do this i want to do whatever it is think through it can be a service it can be a product it can be a good eco based thing esg come up think through document what you are solving document what you can do think through the plan of action for the next 1 2 years this is where i want to do this is what i want to do don't just jump into it without thinking have a process have a procedure talk to the right people your people make the company so hire your right co-founders hire get some people and says are we all like minded what is the culture of the company what are we going to do then go ahead and start the company if you do it in an organized manner with uh, some goals and ideas you will succeed you will get funding you will get visibility you will get customers and if you have a product try to see how you can test your product with a customer proof of concept so do it in a gradual step by step basis think through don't do it because somebody wanted you to do it if you really do it entrepreneurship is there in india as i said the ecosystem is unbelievable there's so much opportunities so many problems that need to be solved so much money that's available in india and then take this problem and ideas coming out which can be applied to southeast asia to europe to us yes i agree entrepreneurship is not dead it's fantastic opportunity still there it is thriving and if you're considering entrepreneurship again if you thought through there are a lot of help everywhere you can succeed
We can't hear you. Wish you can't hear you. Thanks, Shankar. Thanks for that. Uh, one thing I can tell you that, you know, after, uh, as you know, I became a psychological counselor about four years ago, going back to college, getting a degree in psychology. I do a lot of counseling for clients. A lot of them, a lot of my clients are in the age group of 20 to 35, interestingly. And one thing I constantly hear from them, particularly those who are running startups, is that they have this constant fear of failure. You know, that I started something, I'm going to be struggling, I don't want to fail. A lot of people are so caught up in this fear that some of them are not able to deal with that. As a person who has been there and seen a lot of startups, what would be your advice you would give for people who are in that particular mode right now? Okay. And again, look at failure is not negative connotation. Okay. Failure is not a negative connotation. Failure gives you the courage. You learn from your mistakes. You learn and then you should bounce back. It is not that I have always been successful. I had a lot of failures. I lost millions of dollars in investments. I lost the companies I started and closed. I didn't get along with my co-founder. A lot of things could happen. A failure does happen. If there's no failure, there are very few people who have no failures, all success. Very, very rare. You're going to have failures, mistakes. And sometimes even losing, getting, not getting a customer is considered a failure because you're not able to convince them or sell them. So don't live in a constant fear of failure. Remember the first time, first thing I said, uh, you look at something that's not working in your favor, look at it, it's going to pass. This too shall pass. Come up with a solution. You should be, as if you're a real entrepreneur, you should be always looking at how do I pivot from here? How do I take it and switch it over? How do I make the failure a success? What learnings do I get from this and can apply to my next uh, enterprise? Or what am I? What can I do to resolve this problem? Be ready to pivot. Pivot means an idea. Okay, this idea is not working. What can I do? If you're really an entrepreneur, you will always have a pivot point and you will move. And then you always, Again, go back if you want help, support, like Vish was saying, he's a counselor. Go talk to people, talk to your colleagues, talk to your family. You collaborate and understand what is causing that fear, what is causing that failure, how can I resolve it? And there's always a solution. There's also, you just need to find the solution. You need to be on the lookout for solution. So going back inward, look outward. Talk to people like there are mentors, there are people who give you this, and counselors, professionals. Go out. Talk to them, and then you'll come back with full vitality and energy. They can go forward. A failure is not is, is not put, going to put a stop to your life or this. It is going forward. You say, okay, if you fall down, you're going to get up and start walking again. That's a positive spirit to have. Positive energy, positive thinking is very important in entrepreneurship, in life, in everything, right? Anything and everything, We you get sick, you fall down, something happens. You think back and say, oh, God, everything is gone. No, nothing is gone. It's just God is testing you. Just go to the next step. Think the other way. Talk to people. Get counseling. So failure is a step in the right direction. Go to the success. The next step is success. That's what positive thinking. Super. Uh, the last question I have before I turn it to the audience is, uh, is uh, a lot of people have questions about, should I work for some time before I start something? Should I get a degree before I start something? So people who come out of college and people, alumni who have been out been working for a while have this question in their mind that should I work for five years and then start a company? Should I go back to school to get an MBA and start a company or etc. all that? What is your take in general on how people should think about that? Okay. Again, this is, you know, there are a lot of exceptions for everything, right? There is no one standard rule. There's exceptions happen, exceptions are there, and each one is different. Each individual is different. Uh, and, and so you got to look at your condition situation. Uh, my, my focus, my basic interest, as I said, I'm still a little bit old fashioned. Education is very important. Okay. So if you are a student, you have ideas. Yes, you do it, but do not lose focus of, on education. Can finish your education, learn. Uh, yes. I, well, do I apply anything from my engineering subject? Did I apply anything in my life? The technical subjects? No. I never applied anything else in my life. But one thing that engineering taught me is structured thinking, logical thinking, analytical thinking. That is what the education taught me. I'm not using fluid dynamics, mechanics. I'm not using anything. I did not use anything in my life. But whenever I sit back and say, wow, that gave me the strength, that gave me the confidence, that gave me the foundation to go to this level. Not the subject matter, but the foundation, the knowledge, 
the interaction with people, the logical thinking, analysis skills, that came from education. You, some of them are built in, but going to school, going to college, enhances it, exposes you to those. So that is why education is important. Is an MBA important? For some people, it's important. But from my perspective, it's a little bit theoretical. It is not really applicable. The MBAs today have changed. Though MBAs of those days are different, the current MBAs are much better. As long as you have practical uh, projects that make sense uh, and uh, earthbound, then it's good. Uh, I did not get an MBA, but I had a group called Vistage where I was a member for four years. Those days it was not called Vistage, where I worked with 13 CEOs and learned the ins and outs. I'm actually considered in my group as one of the financial experts in financial port documentation. I didn't go study finance. I know peer and balance sheet because learning from experience, talking to other CEOs, I learned it from my Vistage, not from an MBA. So an MBA is, again, if you feel that's going to help you, you can take it. I would recommend you can do MBA on a part-time basis to, so that you can get some feedback. But one of the most important things when you go to postgraduate schools and other things is your connections and network. You get good connections, good network, the alumni network, the connections. I know one kid who went to Stanford for a six-month course. That six-month course for a postgraduate course has helped this business investments, employees, directors, his business doubled after coming out of Stanford because of the network and connections. And plus, he can talk, oh, I'm a Stanford graduate. There's only a six-month certificate course, but Stanford gives him an alumni network, and he took advantage of it. So use these tools. Nowadays, it's more and more important networking, networking, networking. So networking is important to find your partners, your colleagues, your co-founders, your investors, your employees, your customers and networking is the part. Wherever you go, keep that in mind. Networking, communication. The one thing I see lacking a lot in India is communication. They have great ideas. I've invested in some great companies, but the CEOs, they don't have a command of English language. They don't know how to present. The biggest problem is that Indian companies will be successful once they master that because we have the technical knowledge, superior ideas, superior knowledge, but communication is lacking. We are not able to tell a story. We are not able to convey what we can do. What is the vision? Where are we going? How are we going? And, and especially, I'm talking about international audience. How do we go about that? People are asking questions when I go to Rajasthan or Gujarat. They're asking me questions in Hindi. They don't. I said no. I will not. I will only answer in English because you're dealing international. You have to be ready for that. Communication, yeah. expressing what you want to be expressed. What is the story? Two minute story, one minute story, 10 minute story, depending on the time. Wish gave me a lot of time so I can talk, but if you have two minutes, what do you convey in two minutes? So you have to practice that, take that more than MBA, that's important. That's that's very important. And whether you want to be an entrepreneur, remember that I told you, right? Yes, if you have that urge, you know, you will, you will find a way and find a time. Experience helps. Again, experience helps. You may find problems at your job that you want to solve, and that's how a company comes up. You have a lousy accounting or ERP system, and you go and start writing something, and you come up. You said, why am I doing this manual? I can have, I have some ideas. You come up with a solution. Because if you don't have experience, you don't know what the problems are the companies are facing. You may face, you may face a community problem, a social problem, but a business problem you might not know because you not, don't have experience. So I feel a little bit of experience would help, exposure to people, process that companies are using will help in the success of your company and it creates a network you work for a big company come back and maybe the first the company you set an impression they might be the first customer who want to test your product because when you go to investors they say what's the proof of concept who what did you where did you test it or oh, here is where i tested it so there's a lot of value in working before becoming an entrepreneur how long to work, two years, three years, five years, that's again subjective. You know, it all depends on where you are in your life, what age, what is there, what support of your family, support your friends, monetary situation. There's so many things that determine when you have to leave a job and go take uh, the business head on. Or whether I'm going to do it immediately after college. I have a kid who graduated one year, started a company. He's already got unbelievable funding. He's doing great. It happens. Exceptions are always there in every case. You're muted. Mute. I think it's networking is a key point you mentioned. I think it's a very important point. This purpose of CG Connect is also networking. 
I think uh, it's uh, somewhat interesting. CEG has a lot more alumni than most colleges in the world. Yet our networking amongst students and alumni is not as good as it should be. Uh, this is one this is one particular channel we are creating to improve the network. But I would say that all of us should think about how we can expand our uh, expand and leverage our CEG network as much as possible. So if any of you any any ideas on how to make that work, make it better than what it is today, definitely we are interested in hearing that. There are organizations doing alumni related work, but what we observe is that we have a lot more things to do than what we are doing today. So we need to do more. Wish I want to add one more thing. Yeah. Be proud that you are a CEGN. A lot of people try to hide it and say, oh, I did masters in IIT, I'm an IITM, or I'm this and that. Be proud of what you are. Be proud, doesn't matter. Now, I always had this beard, mustache, all this stuff all my life, right from it started growing. I never shaved it. I, I say I'm proud to be an Indian born. I'm proud to be an American. So I had a lot of American customers. Uh, my accent, I didn't want to put on an accent. I'm what I am. This is what it is. This is what. So uh, I went to Louisiana State. I have no, uh, nothing telling. I don't have to say that. So be proud. Be confident. Be uh, proud of who you are, what you are. And if you're a CGN, be CGN and promote it. That's a, nothing wrong with that. You don't need to be an IIT. And, so, and, and uh, they're doing it. We're not doing it. Why? Because people are not willing to open up. Oh, I'm only from Gindi. No, this is, you're getting an education. This is a great institution. It may not be the greatest. We don't have to be the greatest in everything. We, we have to be there. We are good. So be proud of it and form the alumni network. Look at it. Support it. Wish is doing an excellent job. Now support him. How do you expand it? He's not going to be doing it forever. So you, somebody has to take over, expand it, make it much bigger. I was talking to Ravi Kumar. How can we do this? How can we help? Swirish is talking about Catalyst. How can you help our community of CEGNs? That's something very important. Yeah. Thank you. So we'll go to the questions in the line, uh, Shankar. So sure. first question is from Arul. Arul, can you please unmute yourself, open your video, and ask your question? Sir, uh, am I audible? Yes. Yes. Sir, uh, my question is, uh, for someone who wants to start a company, you would advise him to gain experience from a multinational company, a big company like uh, Google or Microsoft, or you would advise him to start his uh, job in a startup, a much uh, company with a low man 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 force, like a uh, 20, 30 people working. That's my question, sir. Okay. Uh, again, there's exceptions. Things happen. Uh, but given the opportunity, if you get a job in a big company, I would recommend take it for a couple of years because it teaches you a lot of things. And it teaches you a lot of things, probably, you know, it's almost like things you don't want to do, uh, things what not to do in a company. But same time, it also teaches you structure. And you you will learn, you look at the company, the way it operates, the structure, and if you're already planning of being an entrepreneur, you you take a step back and absorb. You, uh, you observe and absorb, get a lot of things there. And most importantly, your profile looks good. When you go for funding, when you start a company saying, I'm an ex-Google, ex-Microsoft, ex-LinkedIn. So basically that helps people know that you are a structured, organized person. You are from a big company. It will add value when you raise money. Whereas you work for a startup, you will learn a lot very quickly. You're not just one department. You'll do multiple departments in a startup because in a big company structure, a small company is not structured. You learn a lot, but then you, you don't have a track record. People don't know who you are. Oh, I work for ABC company. We have 10 companies and we do one core business. How is that going to help you raise money? Whereas if you're a Google guy, oh, I worked for Google for one, two years and I did this, I did this, I was in a team and I'm a team worker, I'm a team player, I did this. I made presentations, and that adds a lot of value. So if you get the opportunity to work for a big company, I would recommend working there, even though you think you learn a lot of small company. The, in the long run, the Google, like you said, the Google, you might have worked two years, but the Google network and Google alumni will give you the network opportunity to open more doors when you're talking about customers, when you talk about investments. Okay, super. Thank you, Shankar. The next question comes from Yogesh. Yogesh, can you please unmute and ask your question? And while he's asking the question, you okay, before you ask the question, I want all of you to open your video. Yes, yeah, like sure. take a screenshot of the screen. So, okay, she go ahead and ask your question after uh, unmuting yourself and open. Rest of you, please yeah. open your video. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, sir. Uh, 
I can we can hear you. Okay, she can't hear you, okay. Oh. Is it fine now? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Am I able? Yes, yeah, okay. yes, yes. Okay, okay, okay. Hi, this is Yogis. I'm 2021 positive DCEN uh, and I'm the founder of uh, Touriga Holidays. So what my question is, uh, so I'm having an idea in tourism, a better idea in tourism, but uh, you are an angel investor. So how to uh, approach an angel investor and uh, if I approach him, then what are the factors will you consider uh, to provide funding as well as investment because I am lagging how to get investment. I have an idea and uh, I am developing a prototype currently, but uh, that that's the point I'm lagging. So I need a team. I need mentorship. So how to overcome these uh, uh, hurdles? Okay. Yeah. Th this question itself can take 30, 40 minutes of answer, but uh, this is where you have to talk to some mentors and people, catalyst, how, how and what to do. There are a lot of companies in the travel industry, and I have one company, Booking Genie, out of Orissa, which I'm an investor. I'm, I'm a consultant to them. There are a lot of companies that do that. So first thing is, if you have an idea, have you documented the idea? What is the idea? What is it? You, what problem are you solving? Okay, and who is the customer base? Who is going to pay you for the idea? Because it's not a charity; it's a business. First thing is, what is the product? What problem is it solving? What is the revenue source? Who's going to be paying for your thing? And what do you need to do to get the customer to pay you? What is the pain you're solving for the customer or an innovative solution? So once you have that, you document that, you develop a prototype and prove if you can find one customer, a hotel industry, airline, who it is one company or one in, to show, hey, this is what I did. And you get a you have a story to tell. When you go to investor, it, I believe the I love the word story, right? Because everything, when I sell my product to my customers, I have to tell a story. When I tell a story, this is what I did for them. This is what it is. This is what it is. Everybody likes to listen to a story. Wow, God, can I be part of your story? Can I be part of your journey? And that's what, how do you get that? So same thing to employees. When you want good employees, you have to tell them a story. Why would they work for you? Who are you? What are you going to give them? You got to give a story. So you have to develop a story for the investor, you have to develop a story for the employee, you have to develop a story for the customer. So that is what the story. A story you need, like you need uh, starting the the preface, what is the main thing, what is the problem, what is the ending, where are you going to go, how are you going to exit, where are you going to make. So think of it. Put all this together. Idea, solving, where is the money coming, where are, where are, where are you going to go, and how are you going to exit, how are you going to make the investor rich. The investor wants to make money. The whole story should be articulated. I don't know. I think I'll do this. No, nobody will give you money. You have to put it down. And in, in the writing, the process, what you have here, put it down. And then think through. You'll find your flaws. You'll fix it as you go. Okay, so I think I can add to that. Uh, as part of the alumni program, we are, several of us are planning doing some workshops for the benefit of people who are new entrepreneurs. Uh, there are several people who are based in Chennai who are doing that. There will be some kind of a boot camp we are organizing sometime this year. We'll be announcing that in all the social media channels. You can come and join that. It is mainly meant for those who are very new to this business, who don't know where to start. The questions you are asking, how do I pitch to investors? What do investors look for? We're going to be addressing all those exact questions in that boot camp. We are working on the boot camp and uh, we will make the announcement. You're welcome to join at the time. Yeah, uh, thank you. This, I think that that might be very interesting to do as part of the alumni thing. Do the boot camp, how to start, how to scale up. Scaling up is another big issue, right? I'm doing half a million million. How do I go to five million? That's the next step. So yeah. those three. Raising money is another story. But each one could be a long one day boot camp. It's very, very interesting. That's what people have to learn. And yeah. we have to give back to our community in Gindi. We can do that. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, there, there are a lot of material available online. There's lots of them available. But sometimes, you know, the more the material that's confusing, so many things going on, and there's nothing like a one-on-one -on -one, talking to people, like, you know, if wish is there, counseling, well, sit there and you'll get, you'll absorb more, and then validate with all these online videos and validate those. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. So oh, next question. You. Thank you. Next question on the line comes from Anonymous. I don't know who asked the question about how did your life partner and parents, who were asked the question, can you please unmute and ask your question?
they want to remain anonymous <laughs> yeah probably yes so let me read the question to you shankar uh, the question is how did your life partner slash parents supported your entrepreneurial journey sometimes it is hard to get their buy in especially when starting out any advice okay uh, i don't know you were there in the beginning i i lost my parents i lost my dad when i was 18 so uh, 17 18 so i and i was the first son so there was no guidance for me nobody in my life for me so i made all decisions right from 18 on my own i i know my friends were my partners <laughs> so that is what it is yeah one or two uncles believed in me but one uncle who was in the us was against because he was a government employee and uh, he refused to talk to me when I started my first company. For 10 years, he didn't talk to me. So, so they did not. Uh, luckily, I'm a self-starter, very self-confident man. I saw I managed myself. So parental support is not there. Uh, spouse, again, she didn't know anything about business. They come all again from a family of professors and educators. So they didn't know, and I didn't explain to her. Uh, I didn't uh, get her permission. I didn't explain to her. She was shocked when I said I have loans. So <laughs> she didn't know either. Um, so theoretically, but today's day and age, uh, let's assume parents are there, family is there. You need to explain to them exactly what you're doing, how you're doing. Like I said, you have a story, right? You have to tell them the story, not a fake story, real story. What is it you're doing? Why are you doing it? And what are the positives and negatives? Where are you going to go? What are you going to do this? Money is a big consideration for them. How are you going to survive? How are you going to support your family? So come up with a plan. Like an investor, you have to sell it to them. Like an, you're selling it to an investor. You're selling it to a customer. You're selling it to employees. You're selling it to your family. It's a, an entrepreneur's life is always telling. And again, a most important thing, when you're a real entrepreneur, it's lonely at the top. You don't have anybody to talk to because you can't say all your problems to everybody. You can't tell your investors because they get scared. You can't tell your employees, they'll walk away. You can't tell your spouse also because they will start complaining. So it's very difficult at the top. Uh, you only can talk with a co-founder or somebody, peers, partners, or counselor. So it is very difficult when you become an entrepreneur, when you want to become an entrepreneur. So always have one thing I did in my experience is every all my businesses, every year I will do a business plan and go through, walk through everything, change my where I'm going. I call it short term, mid term, long term. Short term is for me for the next six months. Mm -hmm. Mid term is 12 to 18 months. I always planned everything for my business. And then I made a habit of telling my spouse uh, once a year, this is the financial condition I'm in. This is what it is. I'll tell them. And I always look at the worst case scenario and the moderate. I don't look at the best case scenario. So you need to communicate, communicate, communicate. Now, communication or telling a story is important in all aspects, investor, customer, employee, family. And family, without family support, you cannot be an entrepreneur. It's very difficult because, are you single? It's okay. But then your parents are complaining. Uh, or why are you not getting married? Why is the money? Why are you throwing away things? So you have to be clearly, there's no point in getting angry because they, they're worried about you. They care about you. That's why they ask the questions. So think through. And communicate tell them what it is yeah i think the question re regarding i tell you what the context of the question could be Shankar. a lot of people in india when they want to look for an alliance for the daughter they're not very willing to give a daughter to someone who's running a startup uh, they're looking for someone who's working in a big company like microsoft or something so this has become a challenge social acceptance of startups is not there yet so a lot of people shy away from doing that simply because they won't be able to get a partner that's a problem no, no, but 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 wish that problem. Now, no, for example, my my nephew is an auditor. He is one of the top ranked auditor uh, and badly well. He worked for big companies and uh, the social. He couldn't get a he couldn't get married because they said, oh, you're not making this much money because auditors make don't make a lot of money, and oh, you don't make money. Oh, I, the software guy makes more money, and he's still not married. And he's forty years old. So that that problem, the women, what they're looking for is different now. It's it's not the same because you're it's not the entrepreneurship. You know, oh, why are you not? Do you have a chance? Uh, another nephew. Oh, do you will you go to the U.S.? Then I'll marry you. No, this it's a different ball game. So it is tough to get married at this age. Any yeah. reason? Yeah. yeah. This okay. is one more Thanks. reason. That's all. Thanks. Uh, next question is also from anonymous. Can you share your one bad experience and failure in this journey? Oh, interesting. There's so many of them. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. There's so many uh, bad experience. 
Um, I, I, I would say uh, one uh, bad experience uh, is uh, uh, one of my companies I sold to an Indian company. That is a very bad experience uh, because I thought India is coming up. I, I had the exit with the Indian company. They promised me something and uh, I, I basically got some of the money. I did not get the money. And then they were using my company to boost up the revenue and they were reporting false reporting, all that stuff. I was praying and I wanted to get out of it. That's the worst experience because I've been a very ethical guy. This company did not have any ethics. They're a public company in India, public company like India, not Satyam, but another one. Uh, a public company in India, non-ethical, completely there. And the three years I had a contract with them, three years was the worst time of my life, a negative experience because I just wanted to get out of it. That's not my style of doing business. I did get some money out of it by, I gave my company for a few, do, few pennies. I just walked away from the whole thing and got out. Uh, so that was probably the worst experience I've had in my journey. It's about two, three years of nightmare because I don't want, I, I didn't know when the Indian government is going to get them. Uh, and then it's, am I committing any fraud in India? And I refused to sign tax returns. I refused to sign everything, even though I was a shareholder. And I was the start of the company, but I sold it to them and I still had some shares. They, they, so that was the worst experience I had. And luckily I came out of it with nothing. Yes, I lost money, but that's only money I lost. Nothing else. My uh, my standing in the community was still good. good thanks. Uh, next question comes from Sugan. Sugan, can you please unmute, open your video and ask both your questions? Sugan? Yeah, hello, sir. Are you audible, sir? Yes. Yes. Yeah, the last question is also from mine. I forgot to mention my name. Okay. Yeah, okay, ahead. sir. Yeah, I have a two more questions, sir. Uh, what is the possible and different ways to make a networking in a business with a, it, it's including the skill? What are the skills we need to make a good network? Okay. Network is anything and everything, right? Like today, you are there in the audience. So, you're not meeting people, but you know you're going to get down some names. You've got some people, some names, some contacts. So as much as possible, attend meetings, attend conferences, go to seminars, conferences, so where you can meet people, okay? And if somebody knows somebody, you know, try to, hey, can you introduce me to them? Go and go talk to them and communicate. So that is where the communication comes, right? Be confident about your communication. Uh, in India, uh, English is not... Now, it's still, I'm, I'm finding a little bit difficult. A lot of people in the north and all that. But still, those people just talk to you, whatever language. And use your broken English or whatever it is. Communicate and slowly improve. But go to as many events as possible. Attend events. Uh, a tie might not be the right thing for you today, but uh, there are organizations you can join. And, and go to their programs and get connected to people. That's all. You get connected to people. And any and every opportunity, try to find names, find connection, go introduce yourself, learn from them. And the best way to connect and get recognized is to be a good listener. Listen. Don't keep talking. Also listen. That way, the more you listen, the more they want to tell the story. The more they tell the story, good, they'll remember you. Because if you keep talking, oh, that guy keeps talking, they won't remember. Be a good listener, share some ideas, get it from them, get the information from them. And that's why, and they'll remember you and slowly build your network. And then if you're in a specific industry, specific you know, thing, let's say I said mapping, then go to mapping related conferences, professors, meet them, try to get that network. And then investors, you'll see investors everywhere. And find out what is the investor's focus, what industry, what vertical investing, what are the angels, the VCs. So start building your portfolio of network connections. It's very important, right from college, professional life, and then you work for a big company, nobody, and then respect everybody. Think some everybody will add value. Don't burn your bridges. You might not like the person, but who knows what he is. So do, be nice to people respect them everybody and anybody and everybody is important and valuable in your life there's no enemies they're all people trying to succeed go forward in life everybody wants to be there and some people walk all over you but you don't walk over anybody respect human beings as human beings you will make a lot of connections and network they'll respect you back thank you and don't ever demand respect respect is not demanded respect is earned 
good point. Uh, next question is from Anonymous, uh, who were asked a question. What is one specific lesson you learned in your journey that took years to learn? Who asked the question? Can you unmute and show who you are? Interesting question. They want to stay anonymous, Shankar, so you can answer. Yeah, OK. Uh, there are a lot of things, right? In my discussions, you would have seen that. Uh, but I learned young because, you know, as I said, I'm a self-starter, self-learner, and I learned a lot of things as I go along because there's nobody to guide me. Uh, but the biggest thing is, you know, I thought uh, oh, that you now I'm, I'm, I'm a small guy coming from Gindi, LSU. I don't know. How do I impress them? What do we do? How do you get the respect? Uh, and then I found out, even in this country, right? I'm a darker color. My accent is different. I have this. What do I do? But luckily, I have self-confidence, and I go there. But then when you really get to know people, everybody has their own fears. Everybody has their own weaknesses. Everybody wants to be known, whether the color is white or blue, whatever color they are, whatever they are. They're all the same human beings. So when you start respecting them, listening to them, learning, then I found out, wow. This is how the door opens up. I'm not the only one. Everybody has got the same thing. That took me some time to realize because I thought I have to impress. I have to be this. I have to be that. No. You will get there automatically. And it took me some time. But maybe around 35, 40, I realized it. Uh, younger. A lot of people don't realize it. And again, success. We keep talking about success. Success is not a destination. Please make know that. Success is a journey too. Success is not a destination. I sold this company. That's not... That's not success alone. Success is who are you help? What have you done? Where are you? That is success. And another thing is happiness, right? Happiness, I'm happy. Not because you have five cars, you have four houses, or this much money, or this. It's within yourself. Are you happy with what you, you have to feel happy. It's inside. It's you. And that, again, took some time to understand, right? You think you have to sell this company for this value, or do this for that, or make money. Then only they'll respect me. No. So... So a lot of things I said, that success is a journey, not a destination. Happiness is within. Success, again, you don't think it's money. So all this takes some time to learn. Uh, luckily, I learned a lot of those. And the most important lesson is giving. I was giving a lot of my time I, to my employees or working there. I didn't know that I was giving. But the more I started giving, the more it is fantastic. And that's what I preach nowadays. Give. Give your time. Give your energy. Give your money. What do we have? Give. The more you give, the more you answer. The more you get back. That's all. And give your hearing. The more you hear, the more you listen to them, they'll give you more. Take it. Customers, employees, everybody. I think they all know about the giving part, Shankar. They'll ask you to give money for investment to the startup. They'll ask mm -hmm. time for you to do mentoring also. So Yeah. Yeah, I, that's what I do all the time. If I have time, I, that's what I do. Yes. Yeah. Okay, super. Next question also from Anonymous. As a guy with a non-financial background, how can I gain experience of a businessman before actually starting a company? What non? What is it? Non-finance background. No, no, no okay. background. Yeah. Finance. Yeah. Most of the engineers don't have any finance background, and uh, we don't have finance background. Very rare do we have finance background, so that's nothing wrong. But that's what. You have to learn, you have to talk to people or take a course or talk to people, figure out. You know, that's why network is there. You have to find out, uh, uh, like, which can connect you to somebody who has something will come and help you. But as an entrepreneur, if you're a startup company, uh, you have to know everything. You have to know eventually something in finance, something in HR, something in operations. You have to be knowledgeable because you can't say, I'm not a finance guy. I'm just going to do this. The company is made up of everything. You can't, if you're pitching to an investor, uh, you can't say, I don't know anything about my finance. I don't know my run rate. I don't know my burn. I got to go ask that person. Then you're not a great CEO. You will not, you'll not, you'll never become a CEO. So you have to know your fundamentals. It is not difficult. And there are classes that can teach you. There are people who can guide you. Uh, like, you know, if somebody comes to me, I walk through, I've seen an investment shown as a revenue in one of my companies when I invest. I said, what the heck is this? What is this? So then I had to teach two American guys, teach them what is revenue. <laughs> it took me some time. They didn't know what it was. Any money they got, they thought it's revenue. So they put it in there. So it is not difficult, but you can teach them. There are people like us who will teach you, won't look at you in a negative way. There's nothing wrong with that. You, will, you can easily learn. So the part of the boot camp is also that is to talk to teach people basic revenue and finance related uh, subjects as well. Because a lot of people have that struggle that uh, they have a good technical idea, they know how to build a product, but they uh, don't 
much idea. Yeah. Excuse me, sir. It's not difficult. Engineering is difficult. Uh, finance is not difficult. It's very simple. <laughs> yeah, then uh, sir, uh, finance should be easy. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yes, sir. It's, it's me, sir. Uh, my actual question is what? How can I gain a live experience of a businessman before I'm starting a company, sir? Uh, uh, actually, uh, I'm going to when I am going to a company, I am going to a business. I am going to a business strategy. I am going to a experience. It is difficult because you cannot read other people's mind. You cannot know why, what, why he is doing it, why he makes decisions on this finance and that. Uh, okay. It is very difficult because, especially you know, with so many things going on, he is not going to stop and answer your question. So, yes, you can observe, and then whenever opportunity comes, you can find out why did you make the decision? Why did you do this? You can do that. That is called shadowing. No? That's, uh, that, that like the doctors do, shadowing. So we have some programs where that is why the nurture program, the mentoring program comes in. That's exactly what it is. Nurture, mentorship are done by entrepreneurs, right? So either they may be actively running a company or they may be retired. But that is what you go to a mentoring nurture program, focusing towards on what you want, either finance or operations or marketing, and then you will gain it. A lot of the Thai chapters do nurturing program. Yeah. So they're all experienced current CEOs are coming and teaching. They're coming and tell you what is it. That's the time you can ask the questions. Why did you make that kind of a decision? In real life, you can't follow somebody and do it. It doesn't happen. It takes too much energy and money for them to have you as an intern walking behind them learning things. Yeah. And they're not going to teach you. They may hold off something. But as they go to nurturing and mentoring, they come with the attitude of giving. So they're going to give you more. Thank you. So we have Thank you. Thank questions. you so much, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. We have four more questions. Sir. I hope you can take some time. Is it okay to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. So the next question is coming from another anonymous question. If you have to build a support system for becoming a successful entrepreneur, who all will be in your list today? Hmm. I, again, I, uh, it's, it's a very vague question yeah. and general too big. Uh, Who asked the question? Do you want to explain what you're asking? What kind of what context you're asking? It's an anonymous, so I was asking the question. Surya, is that your question? Okay. Anyway, so for me, you know, I always consider people as my assets. When I sold my first two companies, uh, all three companies, uh, UPS asked me, you know, what about your products or IP and all that? I said, no, no, first let's talk about people. People make my company. People are the assets. And people came first. Customers came next, which is also again people. My IP and my products I had came third because with the right people, I can develop anything I want. So that's an attitude I had. So the support system is for me a great multitude of people. When the fifth company I started or the last one I started uh, where my employees, I, I respected the people, they all worked for me. I had employees working 25 years for me. Nobody leaves my company. And uh, six people from UPS walked out and said, Shankar, I want to be with you. I don't care about UPS. They gave, their salary was double, but they walked out of it and came and wanted to work for me. They came here. So my support system uh, is my people, the build people I believe I, and I develop. That's, that's enough for me. Uh, with that, I can go do anything I want. And naturally, customers come into that, right? That support system, one or two people establish the industry, but a great team of co-workers, co-founders, that will be the system if I want to be a successful entrepreneur. Super. Thanks. Uh, next question is from Ravi Chandran. Ravi, do you want to unmute and ask a question? Yeah. Hi, Shankar. Hi. My question is related to, uh, you know, your venture, actually, which is Food Finders. Uh -huh. I've seen, you know, multiple, uh, at least in the three cities, which I normally know about, Bangalore, where I'm based, Madurai, my hometown, and Chennai, where you know my wife is based, and all that stuff. Uh, where is it from, and all that? So that is something you know where I've seen actually there a lot of you know, hyper local, uh, you know, kind of like efforts are on to collect the food from restaurants, unused food, or say you know, excess food, and all that stuff. But then they are not able to scale. So you just what are the, is the food finder model has any secret sauce or something, and can no. it be replicated in India? No. Okay. Actually, that's a great question, but simple. Uh, my belief scaling is not important for my scaling is not important because this is not this is a charity we're giving scaling is immaterial to me the scaling in the form of how many people uh, how many people am i able to feed 
how much how much like right food finders we rescue 16 million pounds of food i want to scale it to 20 million pounds of food 25 million of food not the wide reach area i'm not i don't not the area width wise how much food i can save and how many people can i feed can people nutritious food that is the scaling for me the second thing is uh, when you say you know scaling you know we want to go to more schools more people right that's what we want to do and how do i do that uh, within that so you can focus, I'm not sure whether you want a geographical scaling or the people scaling. What is it you're looking at? Typically people scaling, which also includes geography in my uh, kind okay. of opinion. I'm not talking about the type of uh, Akshay Patra, I'm sure you might have heard about and all that. Yeah. You know, their reach is obviously you know, like humongous and which is good. And uh, I've also been a contributor earlier actually there to Akshay Patra. But point is, I've seen, you know, the the uh, by local, I mean, you know, like somebody who, for example, in, in uh, Chennai, I know somebody who was able to do some collection in uh, OMR, Old Mahabhim Road, you know, beyond anonymity. Actually, there they were not able to replicate it in ECR, which is a okay. parallel kind okay. of road. So, so what? Yeah, that's a good one. What we did is we have a great network of volunteers. Our we have our own trucks and everything. We have our employees. We have about 12, 14 employees, 20 employees now uh, uh, that runs a truck and operations and all that. So we are a B2B, business to business and food finders. We collect uh, from restaurants and our companies and all that, give to uh, foundations and trusts, which will distribute the food. But the biggest thing is we did, we have about three to 500 volunteers on database and we have an app. So we operate our volunteers. So with each volunteer within a two to three mile radius or two, three kilometers radius, we'll pick up and drop off. So the, and the, the app immediately says, okay, here is a restaurant here. They have the food or they have this. And the a couple of volunteers get the messages. Some volunteer will say, yeah, I'll pick it up. And he'll pick it up and do that. So if I'm sitting here, another 60 miles away, somebody has a food or restaurant or a grocery store, the volunteers we have signed up will pick up and drop off to the nearest location. If you can't ask somebody to pick up from 50 miles away and come across the country, across the city to deliver. So if it's Ananahar, you'll have volunteers within Ananahar who will pick up and drop close to Ananahar. Something like that. So we, the wall, in our case, it's volunteer based. We have volunteers who do all the expansion, scaling. Okay. Right. So I guess a more number of volunteers definitely will help, uh, you know, scale up. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Spreading the message, volunteers will expand the scale within a city. We take the same model in Bangalore. That's a different entity. We don't want that. We're taking one city itself, such a big city. How do we, like Los Angeles is one of the largest cities, right? Wide across, 100 miles across. So we cater to two counties. We have a couple, three and 400 volunteers, active at any time, 100, 150 volunteers. I started as a volunteer and I was, I did two, three years. I did volunteering. Then I was getting older. I couldn't carry the bags. I couldn't carry it. So I said, I'm better off being a director than a volunteer. I became a director and then I became a chair. So I started as a volunteer. Yeah. Okay. Ravi, 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 you can talk about it. I also do a lot of work in Chennai now doing exactly what you're trying to do. Poverty, eradication, etc. There are a lot of things right. we can think about doing together, how to scale these things. We can definitely right. put it offline about that. Yeah. yeah. We'll do that. In fact, I'm focusing more on, you know, the four-legged variety now, dogs, feeding dogs, but ah. that's okay. We'll talk about it later. So. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Okay. Got it. Uh, the next question is from Karthik Rajagopalan. Karthik, do you want to ask your question? Karthik, you're on mute. Hi. Am I audible? Yes. Yes. Please, please go ahead. Thank you so much, sir. This is very informative. I can tell clearly based on uh, what you're explaining, how important diligence is. So we are a startup in the 3D generative AI space with a strong patent product and uh, demand. And so my question comes from the perspective of knowing that our number one priority is protecting investors' investment. So we are raising our seed stage now. So we have experts, expert advisors with domain expertise. Some of them are CG alumni who gave me this link, asked me to join. So our management team, though, does not have domain expertise. That's what we're developing now. So for a seed investor, how big a concern would this be? And uh, how would we address it? Our initial plan is to raise the funds, then approach management with a lot of experience in our domain. OK. Do you have a co-founder, or are you just only founder, solo founder? Solo founder. OK. Yeah, that's a big problem normally, because the investors are always looking for a team. Who's your team? I have a company in Delhi that's exactly, they're growing so fast. 90 employees and uh, there's no depth in the management. 
So, uh, but that already has seven crores of business and they don't know how to do this. All youngsters are, out of the 85, 90 employees, 80 of them are below 30. It's, it's a really interesting in India that's happening a lot nowadays. So young people want starting companies, it takes off, but there's no depth, there's no team. It's very difficult. He's trying to go to series A. C, we got it, series A. And I told him, you're not going to go to series A. There's no team, there's no depth. And that's what we're trying to have. A team is very important because, you know, what if something happens to you? Who's the idea? What is that? You have to share your things. So find yourself a co-founder. If you can find a co-founder or in your company, you already have employees. If you don't have employees, uh, at least you have a pitch idea. That's why it's called pre, you know, the seed. Basically, friends and family will, will believe in you and trust you. The better, the faster you can build a team around you. Mm. And not necessarily all senior people, somebody who can train and get to that job at least. Before you go to series, you know, some serious seed investments, uh, it, then you need to have a team, at least two or three people, not necessarily finance experts. You can get part-time finance, part-time thing. Your product, theoretically, if you're a technical guy, you, you don't really need. If you're a finance marketing guy, then you need a product guy. So that kind of a combination. So you can have somebody who is right next to you, Probably he's not a co-founder, but he's your number two in technology. Then you make sure you hire a marketing. Marketing sales, go to market is very important, right? So you hire somebody there. A lot of companies have part-time marketing sales, if possible, because the compensation will be very high. How do you come up with it? Give them equity. You have to give good employees equity uh, options and for them to join you. So you have to build a team when you want to go from, uh, call it friends and family round, to the next round, some team, and then the next seed, real seed round, you need to have a team. Otherwise, it's very difficult for investors to believe in you. The exceptions are always there, but I'm just saying, you know, this is what it is. Yeah. We invested, I, I invested two rounds in a company where there's no team, there's one kid because they're such a super geospatial company uh, out of Delhi. I said they had less than one crore or whatever it is. Now they're uh, seven, eight crores in business and 90 employees. Unbelievable, still he doesn't have a team. So he's, he's identified 20 people. I'm interviewing all the 20 and see who can go up to the next level. I gave him some MBAs to part-time trying to build a team. Next year, I'm going to focus more on how to build a real team because this unicorn potential company, but there's no team. How do you mm. do it? That's what we're working on. Yes, team is important. So if I understand what you're saying correctly, regardless of the employee section, the management team has to be there for seed, right? Yeah, it depends. One or two. Dep depends. You know, again, I don't know much about your company. When uh, before, probably we can look at it. And what kind of people do you need to so that you can convince the investor this is okay? It, it can't. Well, one person dependent on one person. What are they going to do? I need to. We need to look at the picture, big picture. If you are a solid technology company, you already have one customer using it. Maybe you can get away without a team mm -hmm. to a certain level. <laughs> somebody will invest. Somebody will invest money to a certain level. But if you want to expand that one to 10 companies, are you the only salesperson? Are you the only person selling as well as supporting? Those kind of things, right? How much of support does a product mm -hmm. need? There's a lot of questions that goes with it. I can tell you. Thank you, sir. Yeah. I can tell you that as an investor, we don't like single person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because what if something happens to you and the person either uh, loses interest or goes away somewhere or falls sick, it's a big risk. So as investors, we also always look for more than one founder. So if you Makes look sense. for investment, I think you should definitely find a co-founder. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thanks, uh, Karthik. So the last question of the day Thank comes you. from uh, last question of the day comes from Rajesh Ramdas. Rajesh, can you ask a question? Yes. Sure. Uh, uh, hi, Shankar, and uh, hi. this is an awesome presentation. Thanks for all the inputs. Uh, my question mm -hmm. comes from, uh, uh, and I work for a multinational uh, organization. I really love my job. Uh, at the same time, I'm uh, I mean, looking into um, I mean, startup ideas, is there any way that entrepreneurs can work part time and still be successful? Because I've heard heard that uh, uh, unless you devote completely into the entrepreneurship, uh, then you're not taken seriously. So, what yeah. are your thoughts? No, again, <laughs> yes. Any anybody and everybody is an entrepreneur. Okay, there's nothing wrong. Everybody's an entrepreneur when you start some ideas. You sure. have to decide. What kind of business do you want to have? Do you want a family lifestyle business or you want a business that scales and becomes a big company and product? So if you want to be a lifestyle business uh, or do something, you know, to you and your family to satisfy your uh, knowledge, ego, whatever it is, it, it, you're an entrepreneur. Uh, everybody's an entrepreneur. There's nothing wrong with it. So you can continue working, continue to have a small business or make a 
few crores and be happy and that's nothing wrong with it nobody's going to say who are you to do that nothing but the moment you want to make it a big you want investors you want other people to look at it then comes a the problem then you cannot be doing two things at a time maybe some friends and family will invest and industry will not invest because you know one minute what is your focus what is it you're trying to do how do i get my money how do they scale this company we are looking at companies that can the solving the problem, scaling, revenue producing, returns. For that, we want 100% full time. As he said, he wants a co founder, he wants a team, he wants all that. How do you build all that? You cannot do it working for a company because you're afraid to take the risk because you don't want to leave the job and go there. So if you're afraid, well, 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 we'll be more than afraid. We won't even put, touch you. So that is, so it depends on where you want to go. And nothing wrong. Everybody's an entrepreneur. The entrepreneur spirit is in all of us. And nobody's going to say, uh, unless somebody, you know, complain, oh, you didn't raise money, so you're not an entrepreneur. That's BS. You, right. uh, you're an entrepreneur, you can do what you want. I, I started and sold more companies. People told me, how come you could have taken one company and made it big or taken public? I have so many ideas. For me, th that's the fun I have. When a company reaches 5, 10 million, I sell it and move on to the next. Only one company, I went to 30 million. For me, I don't want to make a big company. I, come, I want to solve problems. I want to create ideas. It's a different kind of entrepreneurship. Why would I keep on starting companies? Because this is what I just, I'm a co-founder of another company. I just, so I keep doing it because that's what I want. I'm not doing it for you. I'm doing it for myself. Right. And if this company, one company, I'm trying to raise money there. I said, there are other two co-founders. They're going to raise money. Now I'm the figure. I, 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 I they have used me as a reference, but I'm not the founder that's working full time. Okay. So okay. if I'm the full, if I'm doing all this and doing that, I cannot raise money. Nobody will give me money. That's why. Right. Okay. okay, got it. Thank you very much. Sir. And one, one thing I uh, uh, wish before you end, I wanted, now this is something I used all my life. I read it long time back and uh, a quote by George Bernard Shaw. I want to end it wherever I talk. I always end it with that because that's something I strongly believe in and I've done it. So let me, this. I'm going to read it so that I don't make a mistake and because I know the meaning, I, that's what I follow. But look, simple thing. People are always blaming their circumstance for what they are. The people who get on in this world are the people who get up and look for the circumstances they want. And if they can't find them, they make them. And I wow. say, that is what made me. Very you nice. cannot blame and you can't do this. If it's not there, you create the circumstance and you make the circumstance. You do it. And I always say, that's what made me who I am. And that's very important. Don't keep blaming and pointing fingers and this and that. You create it. You do what you do. That is why you'll you'll be there. And again, success is a journey, not a destination. Remember that. Thank you so much, Shankar. It's a very good session today. Thanks for staying up a little longer than what we planned. Uh, thank you all for joining the good session job. today. Uh, would like to hear your feedback. So all of you, if you get a chance, then you can put your feedback in the Slido uh, system itself. Or if you want to send a note to us, you can send it to us. All of us are available online. If you want to reach me for any specific request about CEG Connect or about anything about the program or what we are doing, you can reach out to me. CEGConnect.com is the website. CEGCONNECT.com is the website. You can go up there and you can get all our contact information there. Please uh, look at the website. Please uh, read through the contents and uh, please do reach out to us if you have any questions and we'll be more than happy to help you, particularly for the young students who are wanting to become entrepreneurs or startup founders. We are definitely wanting to help you. We are there and we have a very, very large alumni network. And fortunately, because of networking that we had done, Shankar and I have access to several thousands of CED entrepreneurs worldwide and CED investors worldwide. So we'll be happy to help you with your requests. So please do reach out to us and please make use of the opportunity to get the help from the portal and from our contacts as well. Yeah. Okay? Thanks for the time. Thanks for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you.